Hey guys, welcome back to another Trick Tip Tuesday, and I'm going to talk to you guys today about blade selection for your bandsaw. So, um, you maybe uh, maybe you got your saw; it already came with a blade. It's time to buy a new one, and you want to know, uh, you know, what the best process is for. Uh, maybe you didn't. Maybe you found that there was issues with the blade you had uh, based on material you were cutting. You wished it was cutting a little better, a little differently, that sort of thing. Or uh, let's say you've had your saw for a while and you've kind of figured out what material you're cutting on it really frequently and you want to know how to optimize the blade life uh, for your machine based on what you're cutting, that sort of thing. So um, obviously, you know, a lot of saws, including this roll in here, uh, there's recommended uh, tooth counts, uh, you know, for the blades based on the material thickness, that sort of thing. Um, you know, and it's a good idea to, you know, follow some of those uh, guidelines per the manufacturer of your saw. So you might look up what your manufacturer recommends. Um, but some, uh, basically some, uh, some rules of thumb that you can use uh, no matter what saw you have uh, that will get you really close to the proper tooth count on your blade um, you know, for what you're cutting. So you always want to have at least three teeth cutting in the material at all times. So obviously, um, you know, that depends on whether you're cutting tubing or any kind of other structural materials, um, you know, that you're using a wall thickness as your gauge or whether you're cutting solid bar, round or square stock, that sort of thing, or even flat bar, uh, flat stock type material. So uh, you never want to have any more than about 18 or so teeth uh, in the material at once. So if you're cutting, uh, you know, say you're cutting two inch uh, square stock material, um, you want to have a pretty aggressive tooth count. So even down to, let's say like a two to three tooth per inch count uh, on something that is that solid and that thick, you want to get down to something that you're really going to be, um, you know, reducing the amount of teeth in the material uh, at a time and it's going to give you the most proper and the best cut uh, with that. So if you get down to something thinner, uh, let's say you're cutting some tubing that has a sixteenth of an inch wall thickness, you really want to have a really fine blade uh, on there. So, um, you know, some of what might be available might depend on what size of, uh, you know, blade you have for your machine as to what's available, um, you know, for the minimum tooth count on that blade. So. Um, you know, if you find yourself, as in a lot of shops, cutting uh, multiple thick, uh, thicknesses of material, whether it be bar stock material, tubing, that sort of thing, um, it's okay to uh, kind of pick a blade that's going to be in the middle, um, that's going to give you, um, you know, the ability to cut some of the thicker stuff and some of the thinner stuff without having to always change out the blade, you know, because a lot of times, uh, especially in a job shop, you might be just going over to do one or two cuts and then going back to doing some different material, one or two cuts, that sort of thing. So uh, it's okay to find something kind of in that middle range. So if you know a range of the materials that you're cutting, say you have something that you're like, yeah, this is about the thickest I cut, then you have another material, this is about the thinnest I cut, find something in the middle there. But if that range is too broad, if you go from cutting two inch square uh, stock material to then cutting some uh, you know, real thin wall, small diameter tubing, that sort of thing. You might want to still have a couple blades on hand. That way you can still do the proper cutting. Because if you go through, let's say you're cutting that big square stock material, you have a real low tooth count, uh, two, three, four to six, that sort of thing uh, on your blade. Uh, that's obviously going to be very aggressive when you go to a thin wall, uh, small diameter tubing. So, um, you know, on a, on a two or on a, blade like this the tooth count is all based on per inches so uh, the number that you see so for instance on this roll in you have um, this one has all the way down from like a 32 to 24 teeth per inch so that is the obviously the number of teeth per inch on the blade so you always want to make sure that um, you know you have that accounted for for the material that you're going to be cutting so if you have a 24 to 32 teeth per inch blade and you're trying to cut through one inch of material that's uh, like a one inch square stock you have that many teeth in the material at that time and you're n it's not just just not going to cut it's not going to do well uh, you might uh, wear through the blade faster you're going to build up more heat that sort of thing so you want to get that tooth count down uh, to something more manageable in that range so um, we do have a chart uh, that we have on our website tricktools.com that uh, 
Ellis has put together that kind of gives you a basic breakdown of your sizes, whether you're doing pipe, structural tubing, that sort of thing, uh, your different wall thicknesses, materials here, and it goes uh, kind of a scale of chart based on material thickness and the tooth count on there. Uh, and then they go through that as well on the solid round materials and the solid uh, rectangle or square materials here. So uh, if you have any further questions on this stuff, don't be afraid to give us a call. We can help you out with your blade selection and hopefully uh, get you set up with the proper blades that are going to extend your blade life, which is going to make your money go further and allow you to cut the material you need to cut uh, the most accurate way possible. So um, thanks for watching this week's trick tip and uh, email us your tip ideas at tips at tricktools.com and uh, we'll see if we can get those included in these videos. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.